Good morning, good morning, and um, apologies for our late start, but we'll go ahead and get this going. I am the moderator this morning. Welcome to our Sunday School stream. I am Minister Gary Bush, Jr. To my left, I have Minister Winston Pearson, and joining me on my right <laughs> is Elder Chris Halfacre. Um, so this lesson, once again, is obedience in something. And this time it's obedience and celebration. And for those of you who don't have a Sunday school book, this lesson is found in Leviticus chapter 25, and we'll cover verses 1 through 12. So I will have um, Minister Pearson pray for us, and then we'll go ahead and dig into the lesson. Father, we thank you one more time to gather in your name, dear Father. We ask you, dear Father, dear Father, to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your word. Dear Father, let your word, dear Father, touch. Dear Father, the minds of your people, dear Father, help us to understand the meaning of your word, dear Father, and we'll give you great glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, once again, it's Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 through 12. I'll read the first four. Elder Chris will read the next four. And then Elder Pearson will um, read the next, the last four. All right, Leviticus 25, 1 through 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune the vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. For and in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of the rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune the vineyard. Verse 5 reads, That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. Six, and the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for thy servant, and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee. Seven, and for thy cattle, and for thy beasts that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. Eight, and thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of seven unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbath of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. And thy shall, and then shall thy cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, and the day of the atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hollow the fifth year and proclaim liberty through all, throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possessions, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fifth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof, thereof out of the field. All right. <clears throat> That was Leviticus 25, 1 through 12. The title of our lesson, once again, is Obedience in Celebration. Um, I was reading this lesson and reading it and reading it again, trying to find something to bring out today. Yes. <laughs> trying to bring out something today um, that can kind of, you know, grow us and everything. Um, but... As I was reading, the key thing, which is pretty much the theme, is obedience. Mm -hmm. Like, um, 
God had told Moses to um, give the people specific instructions. And it's very, well, I shouldn't say it's crazy because that's an oxymoron, but it's crazy how detailed God was mm-hmm. in these instructions. And so, like, God does everything for a reason. And I'm pretty sure once we get into the lesson, those reasons for obedience and celebration will come out. So as you guys are studying um, throughout the week, what did you possibly want to um, bring out or kind of focus on this morning? Well, when I was reading it, I uh, came to a conclusion of it's uh, instructions God was giving them. Mm-hmm. He, he wanted specifically the things that he had instructed uh, the Israelites to do, you know, and then he was teaching them what, when he brung them, he brung them into the land of the milk and honey. Mm-hmm. He was teaching them what that they, since they had missed out on a lot of things, he was reestablishing them that covenant with them. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I read this a few times myself, and what I got out of this overall. And I mean, there's so much, but there was one thing that stood out to me was the fact uh, how much God uh, looked after the poor and cared for them. Mm-hmm. See, I don't want to jump ahead, but because yeah. <laughs> yep. we'll, we'll get there. But Verse 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the fact that it kind of resembles um, how he created everything. He, yeah, he, he created, he spoke, God pretty much worked to, um, create the world, um, the heavens, the earth, created animals, um, everything like that. That was, that was, um, what God was did. And then on the seventh day, he rested. Mm -hmm. And so if God created his own Sabbath, of resting, if God gave the children of Israel commandment to have a Sabbath day, it's important to Him. So, see, you about to start some stuff <laughs> extra early because if they uh, if they would have followed instructions, they wouldn't have been in the wilderness right. for, for as right. long as they were. Exactly, like the the theme throughout the Bible is obeying God. And like there's there's countless there's countless countless instances in the Bible where God gives instructions. If you obey, He says it. If you obey, then this. If you don't, then this. The children of Israel were notorious for disobeying God. And you would think that if they would just remember where they came from. We're going to be going out of order in this lesson, <laughs> so we might as well start with it. You know that for 50 years, the Lord basically was like, you know what? Y'all not going to be able to do nothing to this land. Right. Because basically he says, uh, basically six years you work the land. Mm-hmm. The seventh, you, uh, you rest. So you got six years of work, seven, and you do that for seven cycles. But on the 49th cycle, right before the 50th, you, there's like an overflow mm-hmm. that you would receive. So you don't have to work that way either. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, th- because the crazy thing is, the land was supposed to be like that anyway. Amen. We're going to jump everywhere today. Because <laughs> Adam, Adam messed it up. The land was supposed to be like the overflow mm-hmm. before Adam and Eve ate from that forbidden tree. The, in Genesis, it says the, the earth won't give you what it's supposed to give you, basically. You're going to have to work to till the ground. So imagine as a farmer, you just go out, you know, you plant some stuff, and you just watch it grow with natural sunlight and water. You don't got to till the ground. You don't got to worry about weeds, all that stuff. And... The frustrating thing about that is that there are people today that are still living like that. They're, they're not working. Yeah. They don't have to work. 
people that's putting their work understand mm -hmm. the difficulties, the stresses, right. and and we talking physical labor here. Right, right. That the physical labor, everything that they had, Lord's like, if you do this, I give you this. Mm -hmm. And man, can you imagine work six years and then get a year off mm -hmm. just just to relax, let the <laughs> land grow. You don't have to plant nothing. You don't have to till. You just go <laughs> get what you need to eat. And that's it. Everything there is all supplied for you. Mm -hmm. When you were talking earlier, it, it put my mindset into like one of the younger people in the Church of Israel. Mm -hmm. They didn't experience slavery in Egypt. Don't they understand. didn't ex experience the wilderness. They were born right before they crossed into <laughs> the promised land. <laughs> you know, there's so many Talk parallels. about, we made it. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let's look at civil rights. Mm. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that didn't necessarily, I'm one of them, have to Absolutely. experience mm -hmm. some of the things that uh, the people before me um, but it seems like uh, the reverence for uh, for your history. elders or, or, or mm -hmm. history exactly mm -hmm. um, is kind of like dim diminished, and these people Go they did the not way. listen. <laughs> they just nope. they just they just didn't want to listen. Mm -hmm. I oof, man. Yeah. So six years you have to work. Yes. And then on the seventh year. It's a rest day for the land, not a rest a rest year. Yes, yes, year. So you imagine, you know, six years of routine of just work, 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 go to the vineyard, get weeds, all that stuff. And really, you know, talk about it's a rest day for the land, but it's really a rest for you too. Sir, we have technology today. The equipment today. Do you know trying to steer that oxen in that makeshift plow straight? Man. No air conditioned tractors whatsoever. You know, so you out there in the heat. Mm -hmm. You get a whole year. year. Yep. Yep. I know that, you know, I'm I'm emphasizing, I'm just thinking about that. Can you imagine a year vacation? Listen. <laughs> You 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 took the words out of my mouth. I would love that. Let me <laughs> go to my job tomorrow. Can I get a jubilee year? <laughs> what is jubilee? And we don't we don't sell no cars for a year. You just keep what you got. <laughs> I'm not going front though. I uh, because I worked during the majority of the season of the year, and I didn't wasn't able to use up a lot of my vacation. So mm -hmm. December is usually the the slower mm -hmm. month. So it allowed me to to mix all my vacation. Well, not all, but a lot of it along with the holidays. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically off about a month. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do. By the third week, I'll be ready to go back to work. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so... Verse 5 is very interesting to me. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of the vine, undress for it's a year of rest unto the land. And God said that to Moses, say to the people twice. So he put emphasis, it's a rest for the land. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee, for thy servant, for the maid, hire servants, and for anybody that's not from the land that comes. So the land is going to take care of you. So for strangers, if they come, if they're passing through, let them eat. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it, it talks about the animals too. Yep. I mean, you because you, you work you work in the animal six years. Let them rest too. Let them let them be na in their natural habitat. It's so funny. <laughs> I take the boys to the zoo, and and other parents be looking at me all crazy. I like that's not a lion, that's that's not a tiger, that's not a cheetah. And they're like, yes, it is. Like, no, that's a that's a tamed, drugged up animal. 
last evening. So then I take the boys and we watch Africa's Wildest. We watch Australia's Deadliest. We're like, yeah, that right there, that's a lie. National Geographic. Mm -hmm. yeah. let, them, let them be natural. And everybody deserves rest. I mean, um, the, the wealthy people with power, you know, they have servants, they have maids, butlers. I mean, but that, they're still people. They need to rest. So you you don't work you don't work your butler twenty four seven. Oh, but I mean since we, since this is the jump around lesson, <laughs> and it just uh, sparked something out of my um my remembrance was the fact that after the uh, the 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 last cycle that all the land that was like sold was given back to the original owner. Wow. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, you hear people have uh, been pushing for um, uh, financial aid forgiveness mm -hmm. and how uh, you pay for your schooling or where have you, but there's a lot of people um, that's still paying on their loans and they want to uh, mm -hmm. that actually uh, help the economy and help the individuals as well. So, to where they don't necessarily have to continue to pay in on their um, student loans. But can you imagine that you sold your house, you sold like land and certain things, and then you receive them back? It's mm. almost like you leased them, and at the end of the lease, right. you, re you get, you get what, uh, mm -hmm. what was belonged to you. But what you said earlier, God always looks out for the poor. Mm -hmm. So you never know if the wealthy could come in and it might be a little bit more knowledgeable about money, things like that, than, than the poor oh, are. Oh, oh yeah, and, and it talks it, about that. Uh, it does take advantage of poor people. Um, the car industry is is the exact same way. People come in with no money, real desperate, and they don't know what they're talking about as far as how how much to put down, what interest rates are, what this is, what that is. And then you end up getting <coughs> swindled and getting a car worth ten grand. You pay end up paying twenty seven for it, and then it and then it's six years old anyway, so it breaks down in two. Then you stuck paying on the car for seven years because you just didn't know no better. Yeah, yeah. that's but, terrible. And and you talked about earlier um, how with the civil rights, those people got attached to their land because it was theirs, mm -hmm. and a lot of times people will come in and make them an offer and just build up anything or but the land was theirs. Oh, mm -hmm. why you don't go there? <laughs> we just had Thanksgiving. <laughs> we just had Thanksgiving. I, listen, we can go there. <laughs> Cause <laughs> um okay. You have people out of the kindness of them hearts bring people in and show them how to do certain things. And on the flip side, you use some of the knowledge that you learn from someone else. And then with the things that you know, and you strip someone of mm -hmm. something that's, that's theirs. And that's one of the things about this lesson right here when it talks about, it was basically like, yo, this is what's going to happen. At the end of the cycle, these people get what's theirs, what right. was. Mm -hmm. I think everybody had their own number of allotted land in the beginning, so everybody had something in the beginning. Right. And so sometimes when you fall on hard times, you're like, okay, I'll sell this in order to uh, basically to make a living and not starve or what have you. But then when you go through all that, you already know that it's Listen. coming back to mm -hmm. you. Go ahead, Bishop. Good morning, Sunday School. Good morning. Good morning. Certainly have enjoyed uh, your discussion up to this point, and uh, I thought about these two points. Uh, the land reverting back to its original owner was a shadow of stewardship. Mm. You could never lord over something like it was yours forever. Right. It wasn't yours. Mm -hmm. It belonged to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the concept of going back to its original owner really kind of, uh, it, it's founded in how God apportioned the land. When Moses took the children of Israel into that land, God decided who should have 
through Joshua who should have what land. And so portions of the land were portioned off to certain tribes. And it was theirs because God gave it to them. And so uh, I think uh, that principle in and of itself is to keep us from being selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the child syn syndrome, mine, mine, mine. mine. <laughs> okay. And it's to keep us from coveting. Mm. It's to keep us from having uh, what I want to call a greedy, get all you can, sit on the can for as long as you can spirit. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I think it is, it's very fitting uh, that we brought nothing into this world. Surely we can take nothing out. Right. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Amen. Yes, sir. Dr. Pearson, jump on in, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the part that really gets me, I, I uh, really come alive to me is when how God, um, the people that were slaves, like they have sold, uh -huh. they sold them, and God released free. them and freed them to yeah. say, okay, you can go home. You know, he, the year, I, I, God is so good how he does things, how he, how he, see, we can't, we can't even think the way God thinks, Not you know, and the way he he uh, uh, set the land up for people. Now, they was in 400 years in slavery. Mm -hmm. And when God brought them out of that, he brought them out of that mentality of thinking, you know, OK, we have to do this. We have to do this. God said, no, because I'm getting ready to put things in order for you. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to divide the land up. I'm getting ready to set the captives free. I'm getting ready, you know, I want you to think the way I <coughs> and being your God. Mm -hmm. I own this, not you. I want you to think that you own it. The key part of that, though, <laughs> is being obedient <laughs> to him. Listen, Amen. listen. See? <laughs> uh, listen. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I was just saying, yeah. I just was adding on, because, I mean, without being obedient, like, exactly. you can't reap the fruits of things if you're not being obedient. Right, right. You know, you talk about them being in slavery with Pharaoh, and his dad, it was it was unfair slavery. That's right. mm -hmm. So they still had to be obedient. That's right. But if you disobey, you get whooped or stoned or you die. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so, I mean, when you come out of that, you know, it's anarchy. You don't know how to act. You just free, wild about doing anything, whatever. And so there's no structure Amen. in the freedom. Um, I was watching a movie uh, a while back. Um, I've watched it several times, and it was uh, called Charles Shank Redemption. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and they were talking about being institutionalized. Mm. Because, you know, you get used to being locked up in a slavery that when you're free, you don't necessarily know what to do mm -hmm. with that new freedom that mm -hmm. you had. And I, want, I just wonder what type of mindset, because, I mean, we see that even though they were free, it's like, you know, some people obeyed, some people didn't obey, but, I mean... You got you got a blueprint what mm -hmm. to follow after mm -hmm. the freedom and yet and still. Mm -hmm. Well, you <laughs> man, that was good. So like I guess there's a couple parts to that because some people obeyed, some people didn't obey. Mm -hmm. Some people still had the mentality as if they're still in Egypt. And some people had the mentality of I'm free, I'm doing whatever, let's just enjoy this. But God was like, No, I'm the one who sets you free, Man. I'm the one who's getting ready to give you this land. You got to, there's some rules that you have to buy by. But there's a blessing yes. if you obey. Yes. There was no blessing in Egypt None. for obeying. That was just something you just had to do. Like God wasn't a drill sergeant. God wasn't a taskmaster. But he still is Lord and Savior. You know, I just want to talk about that. But you know, um, with all that going on, the Lord was still blessing them. Because remember what happened in Goshen? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, how, how graceful and how merciful is God? Mm. Like, and, 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 and we, had, we had a book of Sunday school lessons where pretty much every week yeah. it was something about the children of Israel where they complained and murmured about something. Mm -hmm. And we started to laugh because it was something every single week. And God would still bless them. So it's like God, God wants to bless us, but then when he was like, "Oh, 
I was, you know what? I love them so much. It's, it's a parent. It's, it's, a, it's literally a parent thing. And I'm literally going through this right now. <laughs> it's like, oh, I love him so much, but you, you got to do right. right. But still, I know he would love this, so I'm going to give it to him anyway. You don't deserve it. Uh, you don't deserve uh, it. But my love for you exceeds what you're doing right now. Amen. Amen. It's like that's that's what God did with Jesus. Yep. Oh, uh, <laughs> but I mean, what what Jesus did for us? He, right. That too. <laughs> that too. So I mean, the ultimate sacrifice. Right. And I I can I can see it here before everybody. I I, I couldn't do it. No couldn't do it. I be thinking about them people. You know, last week you was, you know, one week it was Hosanna, Hosanna, and then the next week it was crucifying. Cru wait, 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 wait. I thought you was down. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't. So, I can't do that for so, you. And, and it, go, it goes to just people just wanting to be a part of the moment. Yeah. Oh, it's a big celebration. We going. <laughs> I saw something. I saw a, a prank on Instagram yesterday. <laughs> oh God, some young black guys are doing it. They're just find somewhere and just take off running like they're scared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and without even knowing what's going on, other people get up and start running. One girl just started screaming, ah, ah, what you running for? What happened? And then they'll stop running, then they turn around and start laughing, just playing, we, we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but just, just to be part of something, especially if it's a celebration, you just go. And so literally knowing that we were sin, but we had free will to do that, but knowing we'll do that, I was like, okay, nobody's blood can pay for this. Oh, let me, let me, let me give y'all Jesus. Uh, let, 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 let me, let me give you Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, yeah, I'll go. I'm going to leave my throne next to you. I'm going to leave paradise. I'm going to put on something that is unfamiliar to me. Flesh. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be the thing you hate. That's the biggest thing. I am going to become sin so that I could save the people you love so much, the people we love so much. And we, we, we disobey, we, we crucify him again, we, everything that we do. And still, he still loves us. And it's like you, you, want, you want to reward them, you want to bless them, you want to give them good things, but you still want them to do right. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And that's, that's a big part of it also is that when, uh, when you are told to do something and you be disobedient in something, there's usually repercussions to that. On the flip side, when you're um, told to do something, there's usually um, a reward behind it. Mm -hmm. You work, you get paid. Mm -hmm. Clean the bathroom as a child, you get an allowance. Mm -hmm. Or you, you know, even if it's not monetary, uh, a thank you or a pat on the back. You <coughs> open the door for a woman as you go in. I mean, there are things that you can do. We keep talking about the um, the obedience, but it's obedience and celebration. Mm -hmm. See, you celebrating some things, but there's obedience. The two is going hand in hand. Like you, you can you can do some celebration, but um, there might not be a whole lot of celebration if you're not obedient in the process. Absolutely. Yeah, there's. I mean, I mean, God God spoke to Moses and he repeated himself. So, like, yeah, celebrate, but you got to do what I say first. Like, there's always preparation. Like, you got to work until the grand, till the land. Um, harvest the vineyard, do all this stuff, but then he was like, "In that in that seventh year, don't do anything." Mm -hmm. And and I'm pretty sure that there are some people who went out and tried to, but um, they were they were either stopped or it didn't go well for them because that was objected for the land to rest, and so the celebration. Then thou shalt cause the trumpet of jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout the end. And how wise is that of God to um, 
have that on the Day of Atonement. So after you've you know worked six years after that seven day of rest, then in the Jubilee year of the cycle, mm-hmm. on the day where everybody remembers their sins and asks for forgiveness, when you're all pretty much you know spiritually perfect in the fact of all of my sins are forgiven. I don't have any art with my brother, any art with my sister. Now it's time to celebrate. It was a divine order, so to speak. Absolutely. I mean, you just think about it. It's like the way that the, the way that these things line up is is just amazing to me. You know, you you work six days, and the seventh, the Sabbath day, you rest. Mm-hmm. And then in this particular, you 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 work six, and you're off a year, and then you do that mm-hmm. seven. Seven is a number of perfection. Seven is a number of completion. And not only that, after the trumpet sounding, like we talked about earlier, the peoples whose land has been been sold or taken, all the people get free. So that's pretty much a bonus for them. And then it says where he, uh, says where, you know, he canceled all the debts. I mean, I mean, just think all the people that had all this debt, they owed the people and Mm -hmm. everything. God just canceled, you know, hey, you're free. You don't even worry about it. You ain't got to even worry about this no more. That's three things. Amen. You get get your your land and your homes back. That's right. Mm -hmm. You you get your debt canceled. Mm -hmm. And And you was working or what have you, uh, indentured servant or whatever. Now you're free. Right, right. With an, a, with an abundant crop. <laughs> exactly. That yeah. you don't have to work right. for. That you didn't have to work for. Right. So, like, like the, the, uh, the lesson in this is there's, like, there's celebration in obedience. Yeah, right. If you obey God, just look at what he can do for you. Look at what he wants to do for you. And it's, it's like, like. It's like God saying, okay, just, just, just do this. If you do this, you'll see this. If you do this, you'll see this. I'll cancel your debt. I'll, I'll even stop the man that you work for. You don't have to work for him anymore. I'll give you back the land. You know, I'll set you free. You know, this is from obedience, mm-hmm. being obedient to the word. It's funny, and I, I talked about it earlier, but I couldn't find it. And here, where it talks about um, being in captivity, Amen. it said the Lord that He determined the length of the Babylonian captivity by the number of times. His people failed to observe the seventh year. Amen. The Israelites apparently missed keeping the Sabbath right. year for 490 years or 70 Sabbath years. So, so the Lord put his people into captivity for 70 years until the land had oh. enjoyed oh. Oh. her oh, yeah. Sabbath. You're going you gonna to pay the land back. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to pay it back. That's, Rest, restitution. That's, Restitution. If you take this from a man, you pay that man back. And really, you should pay that man back more and then some. And then yeah. some right. So, but it just goes back to there's just blessing in obedience. I always think about, um, you know, we used to talk, we used to quote Malachi 3 and 9 all the time. Um, but it, it says, you know, after you bring the tithe to the storehouse, but you, know, you can insert the blank of that. Do what I say. Obey my commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, give to the poor. Clothe the poor. Feed the poor. And and, and the, the the most crazy. I, I, I need to stop saying crazy. But the but the crazy thing is, God said, "Prove me. I, I I dare you to obey me, because I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, a blessing." One, <laughs> one blessing that you don't have room to receive. We always quote, you know, the press down, running over, so men we give into our bosom. But this is God. Now I want, now I'll be happy if if God sends men to pour to me. But this is God saying, I'm gonna pour out the windows a of heaven, a blessing, a blessing, just for obeying. Topic, but I can attest to that. There's, n- there's, there's nothing in that I did within my own right that uh, 
that allow me to deserve the majority of the things that I've received. And being obedient is one of the things, especially when you're talking about uh, your tithes and offerings, because mm -hmm. uh, we, I don't want to go off topic, but yes, just being obedient. Yeah. Um, yeah. And being I, in obedience. Absolutely. And then if you keep going, it talks about I'm gonna re rebuke the devourer. Uh, so pretty much, so pretty much, if you give, not only will I I'll give to you, you more than you. what you gave to me, you don't I'm gonna protect you. Protect your, protect so your I'm gonna I'm rebuke the people that's trying to take, take your, your blessing. Amen. Come on, man. All offer obedience. And it's like you you can look through the Bible and you can see plenty of examples of people who God gave instructions to and they didn't obey, or they didn't obey the first time, Amen. then you can see examples of people who obeyed, and they ended up getting all this stuff. It's perfect examples. And so it's like, like, and, and, and um, Elder Bush says it all the time, it always comes down to a choice. <laughs> you choose this day who you're going to serve. You can't, so you can't straddle the fence. You can't, you know, do this one day. You can't be all saved and extra on Sunday morning and then go to work Monday and nobody knows that you go to church at all. Amen. So, I mean, there's there's a time to celebrate. There's a time to work. But even in that, mm -hmm. some, you got to do what God says do. You have to. And it's better. When did we start this? I want to see <laughs> when. Because this is October. The first, the first lesson was in September. September. Right, obedience and leadership. Since September. <laughs> yeah. The entire book is obedience in something. I think September, there's a theme here. September, October, and November. Yeah, He's talking about obedience. Obedience. Yep. 90 days. I mean, yeah. We've been on. But, but, but why not? He, God literally formed us and gave us breath. We disobeyed. He gave us his son. So, like, we owe God that to, 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 to present ourselves a living sacrifice. sacrifice. It's just reasonable. Mm -hmm. That's the least you can do is give God your all. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the yeah. very yeah. least yeah. you can do. People will say, if you had 10,000 hands, 10,000 tongues, you couldn't praise them enough. And we look, we look at that and just drive on by. But think about that. You literally <laughs> cannot praise God enough. Yeah. If you had. Heck, we, we only have, we have two hands and one tongue and can barely praise. Right, people, <laughs> right. You go, you go through a whole week of just dealing with the devil, mm -hmm. and then you bring in heaviness on Sunday. Uh -huh. And it's like, you should be running into here to get your celebration. To get your rest, like this is the place where you recuperate. You want to run and get into his, get into his presence, but it's always heavy. And it's like you should be like the the fire should. You should want to build the fire because you need something that you know takes your mind off the week that you just had. Amen. Amen. So you should be ready to place, man. What um what Pastor Harris said Sunday blessed me so much. I was glad when they said, let us go. Not, not that when I get there, just because they said, let's go to church, I'm glad. Amen. Yes, I know somebody like that, and his name is Grayson Bush. <laughs> <laughs> For real. For real. Uh, he, like, that's their, I'm, that's I'm their fun. Let's go to church. church. I can Man. play the drums. I can turn the mics Ooh. on. Yeah. I, I want to go to church. And when you get that experience, I can't wait to get to church and be around the people of God and get into his presence. I, I was out for COVID like about two weeks. And it was, it was rough trying to watch the live stream from mm -hmm. home because, you know, being a sound person, it was, it was bothering me that I wasn't able to do certain mm -hmm. things. But when I got back, and I was just kind of like looking at the atmosphere. I was so excited and so happy, not only to be healed, 
but mm-hmm. actually be absolutely yo, be absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then you know to see everybody don't have the same level of joy yeah, and rather than just criticize I just praise louder <laughs> <laughs> you know I was like everybody gonna know I'm back mm-hmm. Amen. that's it that's it Amen. but you you should be happy in the Lord mm-hmm. I, re- I remember and because it should be contagious I remember the very first stream we did oh. the very first one and I was on the keyboard. It was nothing else. Oh, and was that, that, that got happy and tuned up. And all you seen was likes and comments going on on Facebook. Everybody said, I'm coming. <laughs> we I'm was coming. Good. Yeah. Next thing you know, she's running up the side aisle. And if you watch the screen, because I saved it. If you watch the screen, dad is tuned up and his head does this. And about 30 seconds later, you hear the organ. And then you hear the drums, and I got off the keyboard to get on the drums. And then all you hear is Chris, yeah! <laughs> but, like, like that's like that's the excitement, yeah, the excitement of just being in the presence of the Lord. Fire. That's yeah. what you do. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and wrap this up. we got a couple minutes. Um, what's your closing remarks for this lesson? Well, I, I like it because if God said obedience better than sacrifice. Right. And when you're obedient, God said, if you're obedient, there's nothing I would withhold from you. Mm-hmm. And if you just walk in my statutes, I'll give you everything mm-hmm. that your heart desires. That's it right there. And here. obedience, we've been, we've, been, we've been talking about obedience for the last third, three months. Obedience, <laughs> obedience, obedience. God mm-hmm. is saying obedience. And that's what I got from the lesson. Just be obedient to the word. That's it. I don't want to piggyback off that, but um, since this is the last (laughs) obedience lesson for um, November, um, I second that in terms of listening to what the Lord, the Lord is not going to steer you wrong. You have a um, literal uh, blueprint, the B-I-B-L-E, it tells you the things it gives you, basically it's a road map. And so... Just be just be mindful of the things that the Lord asks you to do. I, I, for me, and I know it's not like a closing remark, but it's just kind of like um, exultant, so to speak. That sometimes uh, the Lord um, tell you certain things to to help you um, steer clear of some obstacles that you may um, encounter. If you just, you're going to have some things that you're going to deal with, period. However, just be obedient in the Lord and, and just watch him work. Absolutely. Well, once again, I am I'm Minister Gary Bush Jr. To my left, I have Minister Winston Pearson. To my right, I have Elder Chris Halfacre. Thank you so much for joining our Sunday school stream. Um, we will have morning service at 1045 or is it 11 this morning 1045 this morning um, and this will be the culmination of our church anniversary celebrating 29 years of being a church so once again thank you for joining our Sunday school stream and we hope for you to join us at 1045 and are we done are we good yes good